Hi everyone, today we will be talking about automatic tube compensation, what it means and how we set it up on the ventilator. As you know, once you intubate someone, you impose extra work of breathe. This work of breathe is dependent on the flow rate that is related to the patient's efforts and the ventilator mode that you used. It is also dependent on the characteristics of the endotracheal tube, mainly the diameter and the length. Automatic tube compensation reduces the work of breathing associated with an endotracheal tube and helps in providing comfort for patients being weaned from mechanical ventilation. To understand this concept in more details, you need to understand that the pressure at the proximal part of the tube is higher than the pressure at the trachea. The difference between the proximal pressure and the distal pressure will be the pressure required to overcome the artificial airway resistance. So that pressure is related to the artificial airway plus the flow rate. The trachea pressure will be required to overcome the flow rate, the natural airway resistance, in addition to the long chest wall elastins. Without ATC, the patient has to do the work to overcome the artificial airway resistance. With ATC, we transform the work to the ventilator. The machine will give the work to overcome the artificial airway resistance. So if you measure the pressure at the proximal end of the tube and the pressure at the distal end of the tube here, you end up with a difference between these two pressures. This is what the machine will actually track and this difference in the pressure will be used to deliver a pressure support related to this difference. Of course, the endotracheal tube pressure is related, as we already said, related to the length of the tube, the di diameter of the tube, and the flow rate. Now, the length and the diameter of the tube are fixed. However, the flow rate is highly variable from breath to breath and even within each single breath. The ventilator measures the flow and continuously calculates the pressure drop across the intertracheal tube. Then the ventilator compensates for the pressure drop by increasing or decreasing the applied pressure accordingly. For example, if that pressure drop is 8 cm of water between the proximal end here and the distal end of the tube here, the machine will add 8 cm of water as a pressure support and will overcome the airway resistance this way. This pressure is continuously calculated within a single breath, though this pressure is variable. It may go up and down according to the flow rate. So, in these graphs here, we can look at a fixed pressure support compared to ATC. The use of pressure support as a simple method of helping patient to overcome this artificial airway resistance is fraught with fundamental disadvantages due to the fact that the airway resistance depends on the current gas flow. So if you set pressure support of 5, which is fixed throughout all inspiration, this may lead to undercompensation. You can see how the patient here early on the flow is high, so that pressure support of 5 will undercompensate for that high flow. 
and the patient will have to do more in order to come to overcome that resistance at the end of the inspiration this pressure support may be more than what the patient needs because the flow now is very low and you end up with overcompensating for that artificial airway resistance compare this with the ATC that pressure is high is higher at the beginning of the breath and starts to go down gradually towards the end of this breath as the flow rate here is lower ATC is not only in inspiration but it's also in expiration it can be a negative value to help the patient exhale this would be the estimated trachea pressure the expiratory assist due to ATC is shown on the blue line here and as you see it can drop the pressure to a negative facilitating exhalation how do we set it you need to know the type of the tube first is it endotracheal tube or tra uh, uh, tracheostomy tube and then you need to know the size of the tube and you can set it up on the ventilator and then you determine the percentage of compensation whether you compensate for 80% or 100% once you set it you switch it on and then you can see with this graph how the pressure support is variable within the individual breath the pressure support goes up to a highest to the highest level initially as the flow rate is high at this point and then as the flow rate goes down the pressure support gradually goes down to meet the tracheal pressure the green line is the tracheal pressure and the black is the uh, pressure at the proximal end of the tube I hope this explains the uh, automatic tube compensation. If you have any comments or questions, you can add that to the comment section of this video. Thank you very much.